Vince, are you ready for some rapid fire? Let's do it. Eh? <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know what it was either, <laughs> but I'm going with it. All right, let's just continue some linebacker talk. All right. So we heard from Max Bulla, linebackers coach, in the first part of the show. So here's a reminder about what he said about Notre Dame's rotation this fall. We got five guys that are rotating like starters. We 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 have we go ones and twos at practice, but it's I, we don't have ones and twos in our room. I got five guys that are playing equal. We're rotating them, and different guys start the period every day, and that's been the best thing for our room. That's been the best thing for us. All right, and again, it's not just going to be a practice thing. That is going to carry over into the games as well. Five man rotation. So my question to you, Vince, <laughs> who's going to be Notre Dame's leading tackler this season? I, look, I'm still bullish on Jack Kaiser being the leading tackler. I think when he's on the field, he has a nose for the football. He's done this before. He's a sixth year guy. I just think that he's going to be very much around the football. And, and I think at the end of the day, he's probably going to lead the team in snaps too. So, or I'm sorry, lead the linebacking core in snaps. And so I am going to go in with Jack Kaiser. I guess I'm taking the safe pick because I can. I'm really like I'm going back and forth, not knowing exactly what this is going to look like between Bowen and Viliamu Asa. Like I go back and, you know, like is KVA still more the nickel pass rush guy, you know, even though he's going to be on the field versus is Bowen more the three down, more traditional middle linebacker type guy. But be, because those two guys are going to most likely be sharing more reps. I got to lean toward Kaiser as well, because I do think that he'll end up being out there on the field the most. I think that those two guys are going to be really productive. Oh, yeah. Though, and sure. it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But I think that like Kaiser is just going to be that kind of down and dirty, you know, do the grunt work, do the dirty work, hold things together. And I think that he'll ultimately end up being the leading tackler. I was wondering if you would even go outside the box and, you know, just go like Xavier Watts or something. Like oh, that. I was just thinking linebackers, but I was too. It's usually linebacker that leads the team in tackles. And so I'll 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 stick with that. But yeah, I'm sticking with Kaiser. All right. We've got uh, a handful. We've got some Kaisers. We've, We've got, got a Bowen in Bowens there. Bowens in there. USMA 87. Man, are they already projecting this far in advance? Well, the other forecast for the 26th, 97 degrees. Humidity well, that's the, 56. That's like a week ahead of time or five days ahead of time. So yeah. a lot of things can change at that point. But, yeah. you know, I'm sure that fans aren't the only ones looking ahead to the weather. <laughs> you know, but can you really predict the weather, you know, 19 days in advance with any kind of you know, certainty. Yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, you can try and then they could get down there and it could pour down rain. On yeah. You know, hundred percent. So hundred percent. Yes. Yes. The humidity would be a hundred percent if that happens. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's even worse than the heat. So, uh, I mean, humidity is a real pain in the neck to do anything athletic. Oh um, my gosh. I remember a game that you and I coached together. It was just blazing hot. And I just like the, like, my, it was like swamp shorts. And, and it's just hard to catch your breath. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, awful. Yeah. Awful. So we've been able to watch a few offensive line drills at the start of the last couple of practices yes. that we've been to. And I believe, did you and Brian talk a lot about the offensive line Saturday on the show? We did. Yeah, we did. I figured you probably did. Yeah. So after watching those drills, scale of 1 to 10 – how confident are you, Vince, that the tackle combination of Tosh Baker on the left and Emil Wagner on the right is the team's best option right now? 10. A 10. 100%. I Look. You've already swung quite a bit on this then, just since watching well, a couple practices, right? Yes and no. You said okay. best option to start. Right. I think that they should be rolling in some other guys and just getting some opportunity. Okay. And they're not doing that, but to start at Texas A&M. Yes. I think this is the right combination to use. I don't think, I mean, right now your, your, your backups are two true freshmen. You got Anthony Knapp on the left. You got Gerby Lambert on the right. Those, those are your options right now. Now, if one of those guys goes down, is one of those true freshmen going to be the guy that they put in? I don't know about that, 
but hopefully they don't have to figure that out anytime soon. So as of right now, yes, Tosh Baker on the left, Wagner on the right, that's the best option that they have right now, and that's absolutely what they should be going with in game one. Because the most basic thing is, can you line up right? Can you get off at the you know right. at the right snap? Like all those little things, those two are head and shoulders ahead of anyone else. Yes, who that who we've seen put out there at those tackle positions. Agreed. The last couple of practices. Look, we 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 witnessed. We were you and I were watching the offensive line pretty much the majority of the practice, and you know we saw guys getting corrected on how to line up, and we saw guys getting corrected with steps to take. And, you know, all of those things. And a lot of it was the younger guys getting those corrections, right? Right. And right. I at least got to trust that you're going to line up correctly in a in a game. And now you're still 19 days away as of today from that first game. And I think a lot of that stuff can be taught and figured out. But as of right now, those are your two best options. And it's and to be honest with you, Sean, it's not that close right now. From what we've seen, it's not. No, it's that not. Close. It's not close at all. Right. And again, that's why I think they're going with what they've got right now. Now, that doesn't mean that someone else might continue to develop. But as sure. we also said before, let's see what these guys can do before we write them off. Because, you know, look, you know, again, like if you're a freshman and you can't even get lined up right in practice yeah. where there's next to no noise out there and there's no pressure, there's nothing on the line. What are you going to do when 105,000 fans are going nuts and you're on the road in a night game in your right. first career game? Like, remember all those false starts that we saw right. a couple of years back that drove everybody crazy? I mean, yep. I would pretty much expect that we would see a lot of that. So, legit. Yeah. Absolutely legit. Yeah. Andrew so, says, too yeah. bad Fisher went pro. That really threw a wrench into the tackle situation. Look, you know, look, I, I still think, you know, one Fisher was drafted in the second round, so I mean, yeah, can't be all that bad. I, I I do think if he had stuck around, he could have been a first round guy. Sure, next year, and yes, Notre Dame's offensive line situation would be in a much different place oh, right man. now had he stayed for one more year. I that, completely what happened. With, I completely agree with that. We all said that he should have stayed, and I was so shocked to be perfectly honest with you when he left. But I was also shocked that he was a second round draft pick. Mm -hmm. And I am not, he would have had to have one hell of a season to boost his way into the first round. But it's definitely possible. He's got a lot of those measurables that people look for, right? That, that, that scouts look for in the NFL. He might have been able to boost himself up, but second round might have been his ceiling. You know what I mean? Re yeah. Regardless. And so I guess the way it went you have to say he probably made the right decision yeah but for notre dame it would have been great if he came back it would have been great I, no I, doubt about that shocked he went in the second round man dk says tosh baker is a distant relative to chuck norris really Friggin chuck norris well if that's the case <laughs> then they clearly made the right decision thank you chuck norris Do you remember that oh that's great dodgeball yes <laughs> I do, Thank actually. you, Peter. <laughs> Friggin' Chuck Norris. All right. So Riley Leonard spoke with the media this weekend as well. And we, of course, know that Riley Leonard is a running quarterback. Here's his response to whether he will slide or oh, drop boy. his shoulder at the end of runs this season. Vince is already excited to hear this one. Yeah, nervous. I think the moment you think about it is that's 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 when you kind of get smoked. I'm just like an instant guy, so if I dive, I dive. If I slide, I slide. I'm probably more of a diver um, because nowadays, like if you watch a game and you slide, like they'll mark you. Like you'll lose a good four yards, um, four or five yards every time you slide feet first. So I'm I'm just instinct, just feel the game out, not not think too much about it. He's in sync, even though he's the new kid on the block. But oh, um, look at yeah. you! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, you very much. For that one. He's a diver, though, Vince. He he's wants to go head first. Apparently, I'm not surprised. Look, here's the thing: as much as I don't want him to get hurt, obviously, I mean, he. I earlier today I named him my MVP. Like he is, if he goes down, that's going to hurt the team the most. If any position on this team, if he goes down, that hurts the team the most. Okay. I want him to slide. I do. Yes. He's absolutely right about losing yards, number one. I get that. So, but here's the thing. If you've already got the first down, I don't care about losing three or four yards. I don't care about that, okay? 
if you are trying to get a first down, Good call. then yeah, man, you got to dive head first. You got to make it happen. You got to do what you got to do. Here's the thing. A lot of times quarterbacks who slide, sometimes they get popped too, because they are really opening themselves up when they slide back. You know, you get a guy who purposely or not purposely comes at you and just drills you right in the face mask. You know, yes, it's a penalty. Yes, you gain yards, but you also might lose your quarterback. So I trust his instincts right now because he is a physical runner. He wants to be physical. He wants to do all of these things. And look, man, you stand next to him like we get a chance to it at practice. I mean, he's he's. Built much like bigger a brick than you house. think. Much bigger than you think he, he would is. Be. Bigger, wider. He's bigger, tall. Like he is put together, Sean. And so he's got the quote unquote armor. And I'm not overly worried about his wear and tear from sliding. So, dude, do what you do. That's what I would say. I don't want to take the aggressiveness out of Riley Leonard either. That's the other piece of it. I think the biggest thing is just be smart because right, you know. Look, right. I I think we're all. We, we'd love to put this guy in bubble wrap just because of everything that went on this offseason. But at the end of the day, for as much as he he ran, he's gone head first. He slid before. He's sure. done all these different things. And the play that he got injured on wasn't even a running play. Right. It was it was a sack and a desperation situation right. at the, you know, at the end of the Notre Dame game, obviously. So it's not like either one of those things caused him any injury. So you've got to trust that that he's smart in those situations. And I think that that's, that's the biggest thing. Just be smart. Don't take any hits that you don't need to hit, you know, to take, but be as smart as possible with what you do. And like sloppy Joe said, I think a lot of people feel the same way. Mad that Hartman ran out of bounds on the fourth down against Ohio state instead of just diving forward. Sure. I agree with that, but I still say based on the replay and where the ball it. was when he went out yeah. of bounds, he got the first down. He got that first down. And that's yes. why he ducked out of bounds. Cause he figured he had it. He thought he had it. And he yeah. did have it, and but that's a different conversation. But there's also a reason to follow it. Look, you, you learn from your mistakes. Okay. You learn from experiences the very next week. He lowers his shoulder against Duke. Right. right. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I, of course I don't like the fact that they didn't get that, but I also think it was a bad call. So I do too. Yeah. I do too. It's just every play that guy is out there running. I think everyone's just going to hold their breath all season long. You right. know, there's just no two way every time. Oh my god, He takes a hit. Cause like I said, if he goes out, that's a problem. You know what I mean? That's, that's a problem. Hmm. So I asked Gino Gadouli if Kenny Minchie, and or C.J. Carr have closed the gap on Riley Leonard's backup quarterback, Steve Angeli, so far in training camp. This is Gadouli's response. It's just it's just a constant process, you know, of trying to improve, right? They're all trying to reach their full potential, and the change in offense, right, is a, a, a chance for everybody to kind of reset. And um, this spring was kind of the introduction to the offense. You're kind of getting the base plan down. And now in fall camp, they're starting to learn the intricacies of it. Like, hey, that's not a good concept versus this coverage. If you see that, get us to this. And they're being asked at the line of scrimmage to make decisions on concepts, on run schemes. And to me, that's that's the area they got to continue to grow is, okay, here's the offense, here's the pre-snap look. This is my play call. I don't feel this is going to be good. What do I got to get to? And um, that's the area I'm seeing them take a step this fall camp is now, like, they have the base concepts down, and now they're starting to see the defense and understand, like, hey, this may not be good. I'm going to get us to this. And they're making mistakes doing it, but that's the only way you're going to learn. So Vince, oh my goodness, how are you translating that? That is the Sean Steyer's word salad right there. <laughs> it's just getting ready to say there's a little tomato, there's yeah. some croutons, there's you know. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. He basically said so many words to say nothing. He didn't want to answer the question. He did not answer that question. And what that tells me is those guys are closing the gap. Like that's what that tells me. I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading into it what I want to read into it. Right which is definitely possible. I have a bias in this situation, but the fact look, Steve Angeli is a good guy. They like Steve Angeli a lot. And I don't think he's going to in the media put out there that these guys are right on his tail. 
I just don't think that they would do that, even if it's true. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the, why you got the word Sal there. Look, and there were he didn't really want to go out on too many limbs with any of the you know the things yeah. that he talked about with any of the quarterback, you know, any of the three backups. Let's put it that way. You know, like he's very impressed with with the way Riley Leonard has come in and and you know gone sure. about his work and you know all these different things. But when it came to the three backup guys. He didn't want to make a lot of declarations and proclamations about him. And I just feel like when you listen to that, Riley Leonard is the number one. Steve Angeli is the number two. And there's not much that's going to change that at any point this season. Like when you hear that answer right there. Do you do you agree with that? Completely. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know. I don't know where else to go. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like, are they going to are they going to radically change the depth chart going into the season? I just don't think that they are. And if we and we've said that all along, regardless of what the actual situation is, I just don't see that being the case. So I don't think that they want to play their hand as to who the backup actually is in their mind. And I don't know that they actually want to let the guys know who the backup is in their mind. So I, I just, I think it's, it's definitely a word salad. It was definitely a political answer. It was all of those things. It was talking without saying anything. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, you keep the confidence in Steve Angeli that, that he's the number two right now. What happens farther down the line? Like, you know, Josh says he thinks that uh, Carl be the quarterback that goes in the game. If Leonard gets hurt past game six this season. and. Look, I, I think some it, of that will depend on yeah. what direction the season's going and, you know, what's what's still out there. A lot of those different kind of things. Yeah, I, I, I've I said it all along. If 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 Riley Leonard is out for an extended period of time, it's C.J. Carr. Like, that. that's what I've always thought. That's what I've always thought it should be. And if he's out just for like a half a game or, you know, whatever, then, okay, you go ahead and put Steve Angeli in if it's not a high-leverage situation. And he'll be fine. He'll be fine in that, in that situation, 100%. But again, hopefully Notre Dame doesn't have to face that problem this year. Hopefully. Yeah, at some, you know, if it comes to it, to like what Joshua was saying, if there is an injury to Riley Leonard, and obviously nobody wants to see that happen. But, you know, if it comes to it, the question is going to be, and the hard question that they're going to have to answer. And, and again, I think they know this answer internally whether or not they want to speak it publicly or not. I think they know it internally, but the question is going to be who gives them the best chance to win playoff games if they're, if they're still in a playoff race. And I think personally, you and I both think it would be CJ Carr. We've even put Kenny Minchie, you know, ahead of that, but you know, they like, he's talked about pre-snap reads and all those different sure. kind of things, but you know, okay. So is Angeli a little bit better at a pre-snap read? Sure. But, doesn't mean he's going to execute it. That's Look the at the problem. highlight video that they put out Bingo. from last weekend from Notre Dame Stadium. The highlight Steve Angeli had was a check down pass. Right. right. That was the Steve Angeli highlight. I'm sorry. That's not going to win playoff games. No, it's not. It's not. And if that's the best they can come up with to put out to the public, then that's sad. I'm, I'm just saying that that's – if you, they literally videotape every second of practice. And if that's the best they could come up with from Steve Angeli, then that's a problem. That's a problem for your backup quarterback. Joe is going back to the slide versus dive thing, and he says he thinks what Riley Leonard was saying is don't leave it up to the refs. And I, and I, I, think, I get that. Yeah, I probably I get see that. some of that in there. Good point. Fill in the blank. Notre Dame showing of 10 former or current student athletes winning medals at the Paris Olympics is blank. It's impressive. I, I know that there were others. I think Stanford had had the most by far, but they also have the most varsity sports, I think, in the country mm-hmm. as well. And and a lot of their varsity sports are the kind of those niche sports that are for the Olympics, right? Like rowing and, you know, different things like that. And so I think it fits more into what the Olympics are. But, man, Notre Dame's fencing uh, team is definitely well-represented uh, you know, in the Olympics for multiple countries, by the way, based on the email that we got today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, which was very interesting. And they're also well represented from the women's basketball team uh, as well. 
uh, throughout multiple countries as well. And so, you know, look, it was it was a good it was a great Olympics for Notre Dame. There's no doubt about it. I think I I'm going off my memory here, but I think they said Notre Dame would have come in like 14th in gold medals if they were just a solo like part going up against other countries. They would have come in like 14th or something well, like Indiana, that. Indiana, like I think Indiana, Indiana would have Indiana okay. would have come in 12. Like if you include the Notre Dame connections, gotcha. uh, you know, like because Notre Dame is in Indiana, because you like you had like Penn High School had two medalists. Yes, they did. You know, they had uh, of course Sarah Hildebrandt was the uh, the gold medalist the wrestler, and and uh, there was a uh, young lady from the volleyball team that got a silver medal that went to Penn High School as right. well. So it's like, and then you throw in all the the Notre Dame people, and you were talking about the other countries, and I didn't realize how many other countries until they I didn't sent either. this out. Here's here's swimmer, the swimmer, fencer, yeah, Natalie Achunwa, of course, basketball played for Canada. Amita Berthier, fencing for Singapore. Molly uh, Brueggemann. Okay, so she was from the United States. Sorry. Tyler Christensen swam for Panama. Lauren Ebo played basketball for Nigeria. Uh, Kassan Prosper also played basketball for Canada. So you had some other countries represented. You had some medalists from uh, from other countries as well. So. That's pretty cool because, like, I remember it's been 20 years. Do you remember Mariel Zagunas, the fencer? Like, the, oh, yeah. the women's fencer? Like, 100%. She won a gold medal in fencing out of high school before she was even a student at Notre Dame. And, like, a week later, she shows up and she enrolls on campus and they were doing, you know, like a photo opportunity. I remember, like, the kids went over, Jesse and and his sister Bailey went over and got it. It's like Meryl's a good thing. Like that was pretty much it for Notre I Dame. I remember, yeah, back then. So it's it's pretty cool to see this many win all these medals. I I I, I didn't realize until kind of it started to happen just how many Notre Dame people they had represented over there. So it's big time, record setting, I think, as well. So Vince, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. I don't know if you'd heard about this. They're working on a movie called Killing Gawker. It's about Hulk Hogan's lawsuit against Gawker Media after the outlet published excerpts of Hogan's sex tape a few years back. Affleck was originally reportedly going to play Hogan in the movie, but that now may not happen. So my question to you, would you be in on a movie that has Ben Affleck playing Hulk Hogan? Hard pass. That is not something that I want to see. You know, I know guys can work out and they can do different things. He's never going to look like Hulk Hogan, like ever. There's no way you can slap a blonde wig on him. You can put some fake muscles on him. I know. Like, are they going to put bandanas on his head or like, what's his? Like, no, sorry. Uh, Hard. (laughs) As Joe would say, it's a hard Hard pass, pass, brother. brother. Hard pass, brother. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Joe. That is a super hard pass. That is not something that I even want to see in any way. And 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 on top of that, I wouldn't want to see the real Hulk Hogan in a sex tape, let alone <laughs> a Ben Affleck version of Hulk Hogan in a sex tape. So that's why that's a hard pass for me. So I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want to see the sex tape either, but <laughs> the movie is about... Not just the sex tape, <laughs> but know. the lawsuit that followed and all that. I know. That Hogan won, by the way. Basically, really? okay. down Gawker and Deadspin and all that different stuff. I just, like, I feel like Affleck as Hogan, like, that's a satire. That's a comedy. Like, is yes. Ben Stiller going to be in this as well? Right. That's like, right. I can't take that seriously no. if, if Ben Affleck is going to be in that role. I realize he's a pretty good sized guy. He's like over, he's, I think he's around six, two or something like that, but still Hogan's like bigger than that. Hogan, just find it. Just, they just did that, that movie this winter about the Von Eric families, the pro wrestling yes. family. And none of those guys were nearly as big in stature as and the wrestlers. They were actually portraying, but they did a pretty good job of portraying. How did that movie do? Do you know? I'm not sure exactly okay. how it did. But I, I did go see it, and okay. it's not bad. I would recommend it to you. Like, if you got a couple hours that okay. you're looking to kill. It's, okay. Because it's it's definitely based on a true story. I have, you know, like, they did take some liberties and stuff like that, like Hollywood always does. But it's not bad. And it's just like, 
go find someone who's pretty tall and in shape just and like that's your Hulk Hogan you know go find a former pro wrestler and say you're gonna play Hulk Hogan whatever <laughs> I just feel like Ben Affleck there are better directions you can go to play yeah. Hulk Hogan is he really Affleck. struggling that badly to get parts or to find movies to produce well, like, or whatever like, Affleck Affleck like uh, the roles that Affleck has done best you know like Gone Girl, I think like the accountant. The accountant um, was good. The accountant was good. The uh, the movie about the uh, the CIA guy that went to Iran to bring the hostages home. I can't remember the name of it now. I think it, they actually he might have won an Academy Award for that or the movie or whatever. But like the roles where he like Ben Affleck do less, don't do more. Like that's where he's best. Exactly. As an, that's his wheelhouse as an actor. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Pat, that's actually that's actually not bad, Joe. Pat McAfee, just have Pat McAfee well, play. Hulk he's Hogan. got like the personality for it, I suppose. But would it still not be a comedy, right? You know what I mean? Like, I just don't. Hulk Hogan is a bit of a comedy himself. So, like, how do you make a movie about him? And he's been extremely successful. Why not do a biopic? A biopic yeah. of, of him. Right. I, I think that would be fascinating, right? Yeah. Some of the behind the scenes stuff of how he created his character and you know, all of these different things. Like I think that would be interesting. I don't need to why focus on the weird? Like, I don't know. Argo was the Iran movie. Thank oh, you, okay. South Pop 42. I don't know why it was slipping my head because I've seen it a million times. It's a great movie. Argo F yourself. Or if you this is only coming up because you gave us a super chat, DK, which we appreciate. Yes. Your take is awful. I would I would bury this if you didn't do this, which is why he probably did it as a super chat. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because he knew that we wouldn't mention it otherwise. DK says, speaking of movies, finally saw Maverick. Horrible movie. That's like, you've had, you know, you came on strong. I feel maybe it's about a month ago Man. with some takes. That's, that's one of your all-time worst right there. I'm that's sorry. a terrible take. That's a terrible take. Literally billions of people disagree with you, all right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Literally <laughs> at least a billion people have seen that movie. <laughs> I might just go watch it tonight again. Right. The eighth time to spite you, DK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You tell them. All right. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. Again, we're doing a We In, We Out show tomorrow so you can go to irish breakdown go to the new champions lounge put your we in we out question in there for tomorrow's show already some good questions have shown up in there I'm getting pretty excited Ooh, okay that. so okay <laughs> i'm just going to be enjoying my tomorrow last day with no full-time job good call usma 87 says it's why ryan roberts is no longer with ib right i mean that's the real reason it we didn't hurt get rid of him because yeah it didn't you can't have that kind of opinion we, we don't condone those kinds of opinions. We tell you what to think, and you will <laughs> yeah, right. think the way we think. You okay? will like Maverick. Jeez. Come on. <laughs> National treasure. All right, hit the also like button. A good movie, by the way. <laughs> it, it, it is. I think that's an underrated like, series cage movie. That's an underrated twofer. I Both of those right. movies were really, really good. Well, I know they made a ton of money. Yes, they did. And they've been talking about a third one forever, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. I think they've, I think that ship has sailed. There's but... a little bit of a <clears throat> Nick Cage Sons going on. Is right there? Now, with some of the stuff that he's done in the last couple of years. Maybe they, maybe they hit that up and go for it a third time. Bring it back. I can see it. Was Diane Kruger in the second one? I don't remember. She was in both. Was she? It's been a while since I've seen the second one. The first one is the one that I remember the most all right well that's gonna do it for tonight again hit the like button go to nice right there it's vince with an archaic dvd that's right because i used to show it in class pocket. that's why <laughs> right there this is my uh my former classroom dvd set that was vince's biopic <laughs> like he used to see himself as Nick cage running around with a declaration of independence oh saving the world saving democracy <laughs> Love that movie. See, I got glory. I got all kinds of good stuff in here. All right. Got it primed. Just, oh, yeah, just in case you go substitute for a history class. <laughs> I'm sometime. ready to just pop in the DVD and call it a day. 
That's right. <laughs> all right. Once again, hit the like button. All that good stuff. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I've been Asian Sports Talk. <laughs>